join me in the Bible so you can go with me. It's in the book of 2 Chronicles. It's in the Old Testament. Okay, if you can't find it, look in your index in the front. It'll tell you what page to go to. But it's in the book of 2 Chronicles. And I'm going to uh, start in verse, in chapter 20, verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. And I want you to join me um, by standing for the word of God. And then we can sit the rest of the day. Amen. Once again, thank you for all those that are here for the first time. What a blessing to have you in the house of the Lord. I'm reading out of the MEV. You might have something a little different, but just follow along with me. The book of 2 Chronicles, not 1 Chronicles, but 2, it's after Judges, after 1 Samuel, it's after 1 Kings, 2 Kings. Then you're going to find Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, starting in verse 1. Let's put that up there, please. Um, when you're there, say amen. Okay, you're there? Help your neighbor. Nope, they're not there yet. Okay. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Everybody smile. Come on, smile. Amen. Even if you don't want to smile, just smile. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. After that, the word of God reads, the Moabites and the Ammonites, together with some Munites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. All right. And some came and declared this to Jehoshaphat. There's a large army, a large multitude is coming against you. Okay, I want you to really pay attention because everything we read is, is towards us, okay? And I felt led to preach this gospel. And some came and declared this to Jehoshaphat, to Last Chance Ministries, to your name. There's a large army is coming against you from across the Dead Sea, from Edom. And observe, they are in Hezeon Tamar. Verse 3. Then Jehoshaphat was fearful, he was afraid, and he set himself to seek the Lord. And he called for a fast throughout all Judah. Come on, let's do it. That's it. Just, just verse 3. There's nothing else you got? I thought it was the whole. Oh. All right, I'm going to keep on moving. It was supposed to be all the way to 30. But anyways. Then Jehoshaphat was fearful. I'm in verse 3. And set himself to seek the Lord, and he called for a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah was assembled to seek the Lord, even from all the cities of Judah. They came to obtain aid from the Lord. Let me, let me just stop right there, and I'll pray, and then we'll move forward. So, Father, I pray right now that you anoint my lips, and let it be you speaking through me, Lord. And I ask you that you open up the ears of every single person in this house. Let us hear your voice, Lord. And I ask you these things in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Hey man, you may have a seat. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, wake up. Let's get ready for a blessing from the Lord. How many people are ready for a blessing from the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm ready. So I want to I fill you in. Jehoshaphat, he was actually told that there was a great multitude that was coming against him from beyond the sea. Now Moab and the Ammonites, or the Ammon, this is something that uh, if you know the story of Ruth, it, it's, you'll find the Moabites in the book of Ruth. Moab and the Ammonites are descendants of Lot. Lot is the one that her, his wife turned back and she turned into a pillar of salt. You remember that story? And the only person that was left was Lot and his two daughters. His two daughters actually slept with Lot, their own father. And they had babies. And the firstborn was the name of Moab. So right there and then is actually disorder. It's confusion. So the people that are coming against this man, Jehoshaphat, and his army, the people that are coming against, let's just say, the body of Christ, because the body of Christ throughout the world is being crazy attacked. Amen. Anybody here been through any kind of crazy things in your life, any attacks that are coming your, your way. And here is this Moabites and the Ammonites and, uh, and the ant bites and all the other bites and are coming against this Jehoshaphat. And the thing is, is disorder is coming against him. Chaos is coming against him. And I came here today to come against the disorder, hallelujah, to come against the chaos and come against anything that is coming against the body of Christ throughout our nation, amen. 
And I believe that we're in that stage right now that we're moving forward. I was actually going to preach about the Joshua generation because it seems that the youth and the young adults are taking this gospel by force in the name of Jesus and are moving in a way that we haven't seen a movement of God like never before. My son preached a, a message this past uh, week when I was here at the graduation on Friday. He was preaching at another church and it was uh, lots of youth and young adults. And I saw a group of men and women, young men and women, they were PKs. These were pastor's kids that were coming together. And I said, look at God. Because there's a lot of pastors within that group that have been divided and separated amongst us that are older. And it took the youth, the Joshua generation, to bring us together in the name of Jesus. And it was called Unite. And that's what it's all about is unity in the name of Jesus. And when there's un unity, when there's people uniting, the devil can stand unity. He wants division. But today we come against the Moabites. We come against the Ammonites. We come against everyone that is trying to stop the movement of God. Because no matter what comes to last chance ministries, we are a church of momentum, and no matter what gets in our way, it, we will go right through it because we know who we are, we know who we serve, and we serve a God Almighty, a God Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Elohim. Come on, we serve a God that can move mountains in the name of Jesus, and I need a radical kind of group to get loud with me to shout the name of Jesus to destroy the yokes of the enemy to destroy everything that does not belong in the body of Christ and when we make some noise the demons tremble hallelujah and here is this this army Jehoshaphat when he heard that there's an army coming against him the Bible says that Jehoshaphat was shaken when they came running to tell him this devastating, horrifying news. And if anybody here is sitting here with any kind of fear, any kind of anxiety, anything that just you worry so much, or maybe you got some news that, hey, this thing is coming, it's, it, or it came against you. And here's Jehoshaphat receiving this word, and he was terrified that we read here. He was, he was actually afraid. And then the question is, what would you do if you heard some threatening news that affected your future and maybe your life? And you say, maybe, I, maybe I, you say, well, I already received that kind of news and it has affected my life. And if it hasn't, I'm here to tell you, I, I didn't bring this Bible for nothing. This is my spiritual warfare Bible. And I said, I'm going to use it today because I know that we're in a spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. And you can sit there and say, there he goes again, but I'm coming, hallelujah, and I'm going to go there again, and I'm going to keep on speaking the word of God, because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it can penetrate deep into the, it's, it's a good, good word that we got here today. And I'm here to tell you, like, this man, Jehoshaphat, one of the things that he did was immediately, he could have gone and told his friends and his leaders and his neighbors and his comadres and his compadres when the when the news came to him but the bible says that he went and he went to go seek the lord we when things come our way we need to go seek the lord we need to go and call on the name of jesus we need to go and say you know what jehovah rapha jehovah nisi jehovah elohim you gotta call on those names and it's crazy how Sunday we uh Wednesday we had that message about calling his name and here this morning last night uh you know I hardly ever go to sleep uh, I'm always awake but last night after the, the the fundraiser and stuff we as they were doing fundraiser and they were cooking me and a couple of guys were cutting the grass and taking care of the property here so I was really tired I got home and I knocked out I woke up at 11 30 p.m and to me, it was like a daytime, so I haven't slept too much, all right? But I'm, but, but I'm here, and I studied with a big bowl of cereal, and I was so tired that I put milk, and there was just a little bit of milk, and it ran out, so I got the other gallon of, of milk, and I poured it. I didn't 
realized it wasn't milk, it was unsweet tea into my bowl. And I put my hands in there trying to take the tea out. And I still ate it. And that unsweet tea turned to be sweet in the name of Jesus. Uh, yesterday I got a big fat plate of chicken and sausage and rice. And I turned around and I bumped into somebody. And everything fell to the ground. Everything. So I picked it up. And everybody's like, no, Pastor, don't eat it. And I did like the little kids, made a little cross. Five minutes, five seconds, five seconds, rule. <laughs> but I went to my office and I ate it. And I told Amalia, the one that cleans the church, I go, I hope you really clean that area before I picked up that chicken. What does that chicken have to do with this word? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just hungry. I, I, I'm a little shaking right now. And, and the, godly, the godly king that Jehoshaphat was, he did the right thing. He called a national prayer meeting. And he encouraged the entire people that were there to go on a fast and to trust God in the face of an overwhelming crisis. And I want to call on the church here today that you join me in a fast tomorrow. That you join me in a prayer tomorrow. That you will give up something throughout the day. If it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour, that you sacrifice that one time off of TV or Facebook or TikTok. Or you just put a moment aside and say, you know what, I'm going to go into prayer. When you pray great things happen when you fast and you deny yourself and you put things aside the spiritual will come your way and great things will happen so I'm calling not on just the nation I'm calling on last chance ministry that we the body of Christ will begin to fast and pray like never before because there's greatness that is coming our way there's a huge wave that is coming our way there's a breakthrough that is coming our way and I believe that it's just around the corner it's around this corner over here. It's to my left and it's to my right. It's from the east, the west, the south, and the north. And it's coming from above and it's coming from beneath. And the Lord brought me here to tell you, you better get ready because something is about to happen. And I'm not here to play any kind of games. I'm here to preach the truth and give the devil notice that he has something coming that he never ever experienced before. There's an army in this house, and there's an army in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and just say, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after my blessings. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have your Bible still open in the book of 2 Chronicles 20, I want you to keep your Bibles open because we're going to go through the scriptures. If you look at verse 12, he tells God, First of all, before verse 12, starting like in verse 5, Jehoshaphat does this amazing prayer. He's praying to God, the Father, the God of heavens. And he goes on to say in verse 5 and 6, say, you, you not rule over all, and do you not rule over all the kingdom of the nations? In your hands are strength and might. There is no one who can oppose you. Did you not our God drive out those who live in this land before your people in Israel and you gave and, and it goes on talking about bragging on his God and I pray that one day that you're not you're, you're not just talking about yourself but you're bragging on your God when you say what great ha things happen to you you're not bragging about yourself you're bragging on your God and here's Jehoshaphat. He's telling God, you are awesome. You're the one that took us out. You're the one that came to our rescue. And he's telling him how great he is. And at the same time, he's reminding himself, man, I might be a little fearful, but if I call on the Lord, hallelujah, if he came for me once before, he'll come to me once again. That's the God that I serve. And Jehoshaphat is, is, is praying this prayer. And, and in verse 12, he's still praying. And in verse 12, it says, he tells God, we have no strength. We don't have no strength to even to stand before this great army that is coming against us. 
and we do not know what to do. Watch. Maybe someone here is in that position right now where you just don't have no strength. And you just don't know what to do. I said, Pastor, that's why I'm here because I need a word from the Lord. I'm weak and I just can't fight no more. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of trying. And it seems like no one is doing anything but myself. And no one will understand me. And I don't even know what to do. And when you can be so humble enough like Jehoshaphat, the king, to be able to say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't have no more strength. And after seeking God, the word came back to Jehoshaphat through this young man, a young prophet. I mean, it could have came to Jehoshaphat, but he wasn't one of those, like, God, I'm the one seeking you. Tell me. But God uses this other young man, a prophet, to tell him to go back and give this news. And this young man comes and he tells Jehoshaphat and the entire people, and I'm here to tell the entire people, I said, do not fear. Come on, tell your neighbor, do not fear nor be dismayed because of the great army. Don't worry about the great army for the battle is not yours but God's. And, the, and he goes on to tell them it will not be necessary. Oh my goodness, listen. He tells him it will not even be necessary for you to fight this war. Ah. Come on. You don't even have to fight what is fighting you. You don't even have to lift a finger. The Lord said, just stay right where you are at. Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. You don't even have to fight this word. It is not necessary. And I love verse 17. If you can look at verse 17. Verse 17, it says, take your position. Woo! Some of you should plant your feet right now. Take your position. Stand and observe the deliverance of the Lord for you will. Listen, God says stand your position. Just stand your position. Position yourself and stand and see the deliverance of the Lord. Ah, you're going to just be able to just position yourself. See, if you don't position yourself and you don't stand, you're going to miss you're going to miss it. And here is the prophet telling him, don't fear. You're not even going to have to fight. You don't have to do nothing. It's not going to be necessary for you to even pick up your sword. Just shh, leave it there. God knows what you're going through. God wants you to trust him. He wants you to seek him. He don't want you to go to a, a curandero or a curandera or look at your horoscopes. He wants you to go directly to him and call on his name. And he will speak to you directly and say, man, listen, you came to me. Now move out of the way. I will take care of what I need to take care of. I know that they're coming against you. I know you're going through all kinds of crazy things. I know about that cancer, and I know about that loss, and I know about the diabetes, and I know about your divorce, and I know about your anger, and I know about your addiction. But if you come to me, God said, Yo me manifestaré, si le llamas a Dios, él se manifestará, si le lloras a Dios, él se manifestará. Si le adoras a Dios, Él se manifestará. Dios está aquí en esta casa. Y llámale, y llámale, y llámale hoy y esta tarde. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. After seeking God, after seeking God, that's when He received the word. When you seek God, then you will receive a word from the Lord. If you don't seek Him, you ain't want nothing. You don't want to see a difference. You don't want to see a change. Then stay where you're at. But those that are desperate, like he preaches all the time, desperate people do desperate things. And I am here to tell you, we need some desperate people for the Lord. We need some people that the flesh will die here today. 
that the conviction will fall on you here today and that you will humble yourself like Jehoshaphat and be honest with yourself and say I don't even have the strength I don't even want to keep on going I don't want to keep on moving I just want to throw in the towel I don't have no strength and I don't know what to do next the Lord brought you here to tell you what to do seek him even more go to the throne go to the feet of Jesus stop being so busy 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 and get on your knees get on your face and praise the name of Jesus hallelujah come on praise his name hallelujah when God calls us to take action he wants us to take our position. And not only take our position, but maintain our position. Have you ever been standing there and you don't, you're not positioned well? Your feet are not set well. And someone can just push you and you lose your balance? Yeah. God doesn't want you to be like that wave tossed back and forth in the ocean. He don't want you to be double-minded. He wants you to stand firm. And when they push you, you just move, but you don't move. You be still, unmovable, unshakable, knowing that God is on your side. Hit me and hit me with your best shot, but I will not move from my position. Do and throw what you want to throw at me. Say what you want to say, but I will not move in the name of Jesus because I'm positioned well. I'm standing well and I'm ready for what the Lord has in store for me because when the blessing comes I don't want to be over there I want to be where God called me to be right here in the midst of the trials in the midst of the hell in the midst of the fire I will not move because if God called me and if God is for me who in the world could be against me no devil no weapon nobody can move me from the position because I'm positioned Position. God. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus here today. I forgot to put my title. I don't know if we have it. Position for a miracle is my title. Position. Why don't you tell your neighbor that? Position yourself for a miracle. Mm -hmm. Some of you are not ready for a miracle. God says, I got it right here. You got to just be at the right place at the right time. I got your miracle that you've been asking for. I got your miracle that you've been praying for. I got your son ready to come. I got your husband ready to come. I got your wife ready to come. I got your freedom ready to come. I got your healing ready to come. But if you just call on the name and seek me, God say, and position yourself for a miracle, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the miracle that is coming your way. Somebody has been praying for this. God says, I've seen your tears and I've heard your prayers and I'm on my way to bless you like never before. Come on, he's coming down your row. He's coming down your row. And if you really believe, God will open up the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And he will pour down a blessing that you won't be able to contain. Somebody receive that in the name of Jesus here today. Hallelujah. Ah. Maintain your position. Even when you feel, even when you begin to feel weak, maintain your position. Because the devil hates the position you're in right now. I'm talking a good position. I'm talking you're in a position right now where you know better, where you know the word, where you're seasoned. I'm talking about those people that gave their life to Jesus, that you're in a great position because you gave your life to God. Might not look good, might not feel good, but that's up to you. Because if you're seeking other things besides God, you're going through what you're going through because that's on you. I always say no one puts you out, you put yourself out. If you want to seek the Lord for whatever you're going through, he will give you the answer. But some people are seeking other things. And when you seek other things and you run to other things, you will always be in the same cycle. That's where the generational 
curses comes around. But when you stand your ground and you position yourself, that cycle will be broken in the name of Jesus. And your children, children, children will be able to experience the miracle that God has in store for you. It might not happen for you, but I'm not doing it for me anymore. My God set me free. I stand in position for my son, for my daughter, for my grandkids. I stand in position for the ones that are coming. Hallelujah. It's not about you. It's about others in the name of Jesus. Stand for your son. Stand for your daughter. Stand for your mom. Stand for your family. Stand for what you believe and watch the miracle God show up and show off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, each and every one of you that are sitting right here, I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, we have ringside seats. You got ringside seats. <laughs> Shalom, you got ringside seats. You got ringside seats. Way in the back, you got ringside seats. God says, you don't have to lift up a finger. You don't have to even worry about nothing. It's not necessary for you to fight. All I need you to do is show up. I need your participation. And I want you to sit down in the ring side and give me everything. And I want you to see from right there, I want you to see how I'm going to knock them out. I'm going to knock out cancer. I'm going to knock out addiction. I'm going to knock out fear. I'm going to knock out every sin right in front of your eyes. In the presence of your enemy, I will sit you down on the ringside and you will see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Ah. Our job is just to show up. Our job is just to show up, position ourselves, and stand and observe. I'm going to say it again. Our job is to show up position ourselves and just stand and observe you showed up all you gotta do is just stand there take your position and observe and everything you're fighting give it to God everything you're dealing with give it to God everything that you can't just defeat and you said I don't know what to do I'm done with this give it to God but don't quit don't move your position. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. God brought you here to put you right here in the ringside to tell you, now watch me go in there and take care of what you've been asking for, what you've been praying for, what you've been seeking for. I'm going to show up and every single devil that has been attacking you, I will destroy, I will take down, I will shut doors. And I will open doors that no man can shut. Hallelujah. Come on, praise his name. Just stand. All you got to do is just stand there position. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> ah. I said it earlier, the body of Christ, and I'm saying the body of Christ because I've talked to a lot of pastors, <clears throat> are involved in a spiritual war in the unseen realm. You may be struggling with fear. You may be struggling with a bad habit, with a relationship, issues, all kinds of different things. Even maybe a life-threatening thing that is going on in your life. <clears throat> Whatever it is, when you give your battle to the Lord, you are in a position for victory. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, when you give the battle to the Lord, you are in a position for victory. You don't have to do nothing. Just seek the Lord. And when you seek the Lord, just stand there and look at the Lord. Take out every single thing that does not belong in your life. <laughs> in the very beginning of the chapter, we find King Jehoshaphat and his entire army surrounded by their enemies. Listen, in case you're surrounded with all kinds of stuff. Like, I can't go this way, can't go that way. No matter what I do, there's just one thing after another. Can I get an amen? I take three steps forward and I get hit and I go back five steps. 
I can never seem to get ahead. And I was thinking, we're in the halfway mark. I was actually going to preach about the halfway mark. We're, we're halfway through the year. June's, June is right around the corner. You should be proud of yourself that you made it this far. Because if you look around, there's some people that are not here anymore. But you are in this house. And God brought you here today to let you know that if you just stay in your position, you will see the victories. You will see the blessings come your way faster than ever. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Even when you get discouraged, even when you don't like it, stay there. Even if you're crying, just keep on crying and say, I'm still not not gonna move even if you're hurting ah it hurts but I'm still not gonna move because one day one day I will see my breakthrough one day I will see the victory it's on its way but I can't move I can't move I gotta stay and I gotta just stay focused in the name of Jesus hallelujah So he's surrounded with his enemies, trapped and outnumbered. Watch that. Surrounded, trapped, outnumbered. Woo. Verse 6, Jehoshaphat begins his prayer by declaring who God is. Ah, acknowledging how great he is. Ah, acknowledging how great he is. And, all, and, 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 and even reviewing the mighty things that he's done for his people. You sit there. Has God done great things in your life? Not too many people. If you're breathing right now, God has done amazing things in your life. If you're sitting here right now, how selfish of you not to open up your mouth. The devil wanted to kill you a long time ago, but by the grace of God, hallelujah, you're sitting here today. You're standing here today because of the greatness of God. Oh my goodness. Praise. Ah, God is good. Mm. After the prayer, <clears throat> after he says the prayer, go back to verse 12. After he says the prayer, I love what Jehoshaphat did next. He continued. He prayed, Oh, our God, will you not render judgment on them? For we have not no strength to stand before the great army that is coming against us. And we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Mm. Mm. Keep that scripture up. Somebody need, to, somebody need to circle some things. There are three very important things Jehoshaphat did in this verse. Oh, our God, will you not render judgment on them? For we have no strength enough to fight. Three things. Ah. The first thing was he admitted that he had no strength to stand against his enemies. Some people can't admit anything. We need to humble ourselves and admit that we just can't do this. We don't have no strength to continue to fight this. And then number two, he admitted that he did not know what to do. And number three, he said that their eyes, somebody say my eyes, were on God. These three things put Jehoshaphat and the people of Last Chance Ministries in a position for a miracle. Hey, when you do these three things, you put yourself in a position for a miracle. If you humble yourself and say, I don't have no strength. I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. God said, that's all you need. I will send a miracle your way because you humble yourself. I will bless you. Hallelujah. 
Don't be like those people that say, man, I know what to do. And I do have strength. And I know that I, 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 when it's not nothing about you. I come to you as a pastor and I seek the Lord. Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't have no strength. I don't want to put up with any of that stuff. But I put my eyes on you. And God says, that's all you got to do, Pastor Jimmy. I will do the rest. Say, you preach the word that I give you and let the Holy Ghost do the rest. I will fall fresh upon the people because they're my people. And I will do what I got to do. And the Lord is in this house. And I pray that things will be broken here today. I pray that the wall will be broken here today and that you begin to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost, that you begin to cry out to Jesus, that you will say, Father God, I don't know what to do. I am tired. I'm tired of fighting. I don't know anything, but I'm here to just seek your face. And God says just those three things, man. You set yourself a position for a miracle. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, take your position. Stand and observe. Come on, tell your neighbor again, take your position. Stand and observe. Come on, take your position. Stand and observe. Some of you are about to observe greatness. Greatness in your house. When you get to your house, you're going to experience something different because of your praise right here today. Jehoshaphat. I love this because not only do they tell them, take your position, stand and observe. But he goes on to say, tomorrow. Somebody say tomorrow. Tomorrow. You see, when I preach the, the gospel, I really take it to heart. Some people might not take it. I take it. Tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. That's why I said we're going to go into a fast and we're going to pray. Hope you're taking notes. You're not here just to sit here. Tomorrow. Go out, it says, before them. Woo! And the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat and the rest must go and face the army that was facing them. They're about to go tomorrow to face that confusion, that disorder. This is the same army that he was afraid of, the same battle that he said, I have no strength to defeat them. This is the same army that he said, I don't know what to do, but the Lord sent word to them. I know you don't have no strength, and I don't know you don't, I know you don't know what to do, but tomorrow, the ones that you're running from, I want you to run to them tomorrow. And I want you to face them in the name of Jesus. Come on. I want you to go tomorrow. And I want you to face the very thing that you're crying about. The very thing that's coming up against you. The very thing you're running from. I need you to confront them and tell them that I sent you. So when you show up. Some of you have to go to court. Just show up into the courthouse. I'm here so you can set me free. <laughs> oh, you scared, scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Some of you are going to run to the doctor and say, Doctor, that report says what it has to say, but I'm confronting it in the name of Jesus. That report says I have cancer, but tomorrow I'm going to approach it I'm going to position myself for a miracle and I'm going to say that I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm going to approach and confront the devil. Get your hands off my son. Get your hands off my daughter. Get your hands off my marriage. Tomorrow, Erebasi, tomorrow I'm going to confront every single thing that has been coming against me and it will fall in the presence of my eyes. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Now the prophet is telling him, position yourself. Get ready. Because tomorrow, you're going to face that army. You're going to face it. Some of you are going to face drugs when you get home. Some of you are going to face alcohol. 
Some of you are going to face pornography. Some of you are going to face the other woman, adultery. Some of you are going to face anger. Some of you are going to face things because the devil knows your weakness. He knows what you like. And he will hit you with his best shot. And if you're not in position, you'll fall right into it. And then you're trying to get up again. Can't wait till Wednesday. I can't wait till Bible study. I can't wait till Sunday. Why wait when right now you can stand and stand and take dominion, authority, stand, hallelujah. And you have the power to say no to the pornography. When it comes up, click it and say, you lying devil, head of us. When it comes to you, the alcohol, and said, I'd rather get drunk than the Holy Ghost. Hey, when the drug comes at you, you better tell the drug, I'm addicted to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody needs to confront what is to be confronted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a blessing, man. Verse 18, it says, Jehoshaphat, he bowed his face. Come on, everybody, just bow your heads. Just real quick. Face to the ground. And everyone fell down before the Lord to worship him. Man, that's not taking place too much anymore. Jehoshaphat appointed singers. Come on, singers. Jehoshaphat appointed singers to go before the army. Singing, not crying, singing. You're about to face your addictions. You're about to face your marriage. You're about to face your whatever it is that, you need, that you're about to face. This is the way Jehoshaphat did. He got his team. He appointed some singers and in front of the army as he was going. Before he even saw the victory, they went ahead singing in the name of Jesus. They were singing praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Without one visible sign of victory, they sang and praised the name of Jesus. Right in the face of the enemy. Wow. I want here to tell you that before you even see your victory, you need to begin to open up your mouth and praise the name of Jesus. You got to sing in the midst, in the face of the enemy. And when you sing, hallelujah, when they begin to sing, God begins to set up an ambush against Moab, against the Ammonites, against all the army that were coming against them. And God turned them against each other. And they began to fight each other. And they turned against each other until the valley was filled with dead, dead bodies of the enemy. No one was spared. Come on, right there. No one was spared. When you come singing and when you come praising the name of Jesus, I'm here to tell you, it won't just be a little healing. It will be a whole full healing in the name of Jesus. It won't just be your son. It will be your son, his wife, the grandchildren, your family. Every single one will be here praising the name of Jesus because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is the Lord Almighty. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Until everything was destroyed. The praise not only brought the victory, but it also brought great rewards. And if you keep on reading the Bible, it says that after the enemy was completely destroyed, in verse 25, it says this, Jehoshaphat and his people went in and gathered their plunder, and they found among them an abundance of riches with the corpse and precious jewelry, which they took for themselves. For them, for them, they could, more than they could even carry off oh, right there. The enemy was not only defeated, but when the enemy was defeated and everything was dead, God says, now go in there 
and go and take possession of all the blessings I have for you. You might have to make three trips because it says that it took three days because there was so much of abundance of blessing that they couldn't carry just by one. I got to come back and get more blessings and more. Some of you are going to get an abundance of blessing for the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Lord Almighty, he comes to give life in abundance in the name of Jesus. Get ready for your abundance of blessing. Take it. Take your reward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah. Huh. I want you to do me a favor. Can you stand? Come on, everyone stand. I want you to just bow your heads. Just bow your heads. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to, I want you to pray with me. And if there's anyone in this house that say, man, Pastor, I need strength. I don't know what to do. I need to focus more and put my eyes on Jesus. Because I put my eyes on man or I put my eyes on circumstances. I put my eyes on the bills. I put my eyes on the sickness, my children. And, and, and I don't want to put my eyes on that. I want to put my eyes on God. And I want to just see the salvation <clears throat> I want to see the victory but I need wisdom and knowledge and understanding and God says just bow your head and just sing <clears throat> I want you to say this prayer with me but I want you to mean it with all your heart in the name of Jesus <clears throat> here we go just repeat after me as you keep on hearing the song because we need to call them on Yahweh. We need to call on Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I call on your name here today. Cleanse my mind. Purify my lips. I want to hear your voice, Father. I want to feel your presence. I want to be overwhelmed with your presence. I ask you that you'll forgive me, Lord. Because you died on that cross and you sacrificed your life for me, Lord. So I can bow my head. I can sing in the midst of it all. Because I know that I serve a living God. You rose again on the third day. And I'm asking you, Lord, you come into my life. I need you like never before. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And Jesus written on the book of lives. And Father, every head that is bowed here today, that your loving hands will be upon their top of their head and they can feel the weight they can feel the weight your glory they can feel your glory in the name of Jesus and that every knee shall drop father bless your children in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and we all say Yahweh hallelujah Adonai se manifestera come on the Lord is in this house the Lord is in this house here we go come on Yahweh Come on, let's give it up for the Lord here this morning. Praise God. 